Yeah, like a cool yeah. Yeah. Okay, good morning. Uh, I have an announcement. First of all, about the textbook. Who has the textbook? Uh, several of you already have the textbook. And several of you sent me email says the bookstore has no textbook. I checked this morning, yes, they don't, uh, they don't have a textbook. Uh, they ask for order. Sorry. I talked to the manager and they are going to reorder uh, some. So who needed the textbook? Uh, they told me it's the brand new, it's very expensive, like $230 something. Right? Uh, uh, they tried to locate some used ones right, before the next Tuesday, but I'm not quite sure. So, if you have other access, for example, online, or you can buy, or even rent, we don't need any code, we don't need to have any software. So only need the read the textbook. So if you can rent, even a soft copy, or no matter what, that works. Eh? Uh, so if you still need the textbook, let me know, because we want this number so we can order the proper number. So if you have financial aid or anything, you need to buy the textbook from on campus. Eh? Anyone? So tell me, anyone wants the textbook? Huh? That's like a, okay. They are going to order like fifteen. So fifteen is enough, right? Okay. Uh, so because this is a special situation, uh, the homework is due today, but I will give you an extension. And also, somebody says they, they missed the first time, uh, but the classroom changed, and they don't have, they don't know the website. So I let you know the website. Uh, so, uh, every the homework uh, numbers are on the website. Uh, let me. I got uh, one question. Yes. Uh, when's the first day of lab? Because see, I tried to go. The first the lab because uh, you know the, the the hurricanes or anything, all these things. Right? Yeah. So this supposed the lab was yesterday, but it's, uh, it's canceled. So it start from maybe from next week. Right. Yeah. Because uh, I was going to be to my advisor uh -huh. yesterday, but okay. the storm. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I still don't have that lab. Okay, the lab, we haven't started yet. Okay, it's not on my schedule yet, so I'm trying to yeah, figure Yeah, because the first week of the schedule is mixed, and the second week is still something. So we may start from next week, and today is the third day. So, uh, as we said, uh, I mentioned again, if you have a, a section one, that's on Wednesday, uh, Monday, right? if you are on section two, that's a Wednesday, that's fine. If you are on another section, TBA, you need to choose one of these two sections. And you, uh, if you want to do the Monday one, you go to the lab at that time, and the TA will be there, so you can sign the sheet that uh, uh, let the TA know you will be to the lab on Monday. And if you go to the Wednesday, then you do this on Wednesday. Uh, but don't miss the next week, Monday and Wednesday. Otherwise, the uh, uh, university needs you to to report the, to input the uh, non-attendance. So if you miss the first week, you may say, okay, non-attendance. Okay? Which so time did the lab start? The lab is Monday and Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday, you choose only one. From 11.30 to 2.45. Right? Questions? Uh, what if it's just one of the classes? What? What if it interferes with one of the classes? Again? Okay. What if it interferes with one of the classes? Oh, yes. So if you are enrolled on Monday or Wednesday, I believe there's no time conflict because you already enrolled, right? If you enroll in the third section, TBA, no so time, um, the lab listed on the saw is like three hours, more than three hours, but after, I don't think they need that long time. So you can be late, you can leave earlier. So that uh, section, TBA section is designed for, to overcome this time conflict, right? So, but you need to tell the TA that you need to, for example, one hour late, or you need to be earlier, one hour earlier. I think that's the point. From 11.30 to 2.45. So you can be there any time you can miss. Okay? Uh, but you need to finish the lab. So that is for sure. Okay? Other questions? Uh, I may give you the, 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 the questions after the class. Okay, I may, may email you. So if you don't have textbook, you can still start doing this. Um, uh, I want the first uh, homework submitted on next week. Uh, let me see what time. Uh, Tuesday. Is it good. Okay. Right. Next meet. It's relatively uh, simple, just like uh, some uh, uh, unit and uh, 
number. Right? You don't even need a uh, textbook to do it, but except the homework, uh, the, the questions. There are several sections in the uh, after the the text. Uh, the text right? there's some like a self text, some uh, problems. The que homework questions are from the section of the problems not from the self-test, except I tell you from the self-test. Right? Does that make sense? Right. Uh, the numbers are the questions, numbers. For example, 5 means a problem 5, okay? 6 means problem 6. What time is it? Next Tuesday, uh, before class. You just send me here. Right? Teaching, you click that, then list of courses I'm, I'm teaching this semester. You click that on EET 101. The password is uh, electronics. Huh? Do you have internet? So it's not a, it's, it's not a username, it's just uh, password, just electronics? Just password, yes. So you may just search my name, like this, right? and you click teaching. Right? There's the first one, ET101, uh, ask you password, L-E-C-T electronics. Right? And this is the website. Right? Syllabus is here, and uh, PPT, one, two, three, and uh, the, the videos, the first time, the second time, this is the third time. Right? And the homework is here. Uh, the first homework is uh, chapter 1, question 4, 8, 12, 16, yeah. and 8, 2, not today. Right? But then it will be extended next Tuesday. And this one will be next uh, Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. the next okay, now, right? Okay. The, the problems are like... Is that just where the assignment is touched and then we're writing it in like a physical copy to you? Yeah, yeah, it's a physical copy. Okay. Oh, okay, so that's where we need the book to look at. Yeah, you need the book to have the questions, so you just write on the oh, paper. Question. Yes, submit to the paper to me before the class. Okay, so there's only, there's only five questions. Five questions. Five questions. So and each question maybe have several small ones. And the laptop and I have a little bit handbook. Yeah. Right. Is this clear, everybody? Right. Uh, next time, when you send me email, write the class number, E T one one, because I have like several courses. Right. So uh, otherwise, if you ask question, I don't know how to answer that. So write E T one one in in the subject. Can you pull up your email again one more time? The email. It was on the first page of the email. Email is a first name, dot, last name, last name, edu. Eh? Done? Good? One second. Yes, sir.
Okay, anyone can recall what we discussed last time? We discussed the voltage, current, and the resistance. So everybody is clear with all this concept, right? All right. Uh, today we continue our discussion of this chapter. We are going to finish this chapter today. All right. So the homework on this is will be due next Thursday. Uh, the resistance can be calculated by this formula. R equals rho times length divided by the area of the cross section. For example, if you have wire right, and the, the area of the cross section, uh, we can measure, or you can give, be given, uh, that is A. Right? And L is the length. Right? And the length means the, direct, uh, the length di um, along the direction of the current flow. Right? Make sure this is uh, uh, clear. Because the current can flow in any direction. For example, especially if you have some like a resistor that is not along. For example, a rectangle. Right? A rectangle one still can be a resistor. But we need to know the direction of the current flow. So that error is that direction. Does this make sense? So for example, suppose this one is the resistor. The current can flow from this way to this way here. Right? Then this one is the length. This area of the cross section is the A here. Uh, but the current can also flow like in this direction. Mm -hmm. uh, then the error will be this short one. And the cross section is, uh, the area of the cross section is this. Uh, so it depends on the direction of the current flow. So we try this. Not necessarily the length, it's always the longest one. Uh, we prefer to use all standard units. Uh, the error is, uh, the unit of error is a meter, and the A is a square meter. And the rho, which is the conductivity, is ohm uh, times meter, right? So ohm times meter, then times meter, then divided the meter squared, you cancel. What you get is just the ohm. Right? Uh, right? But the, the, the formula given here is in this unit. This is uh, like an uh, uh, American unit. Right? Uh, I believe that uh, re uh, resistivity is a uh, centimeter uh, and uh, ohm divided by feet. Uh, L is the uh, length of feet, A is the cross section area for uh, uh, the. Oh, it's not a centimeter, it is a uh, circular mills. Uh, okay. uh, but uh, usually we do not use this uh, unit. Uh, here is the example. What is the resistance of the uh, 400 feet of 22 gauge copper wire? The gauge is the is a number that describes the how thick is the copper wire. The wire. Right? The larger the number, the, the smaller the cross section. Right? For example, gauge two, gauge eight is relatively thick, and gauge 22 is, is relatively uh, thin. Uh, you can check the textbook, a uh, handbook to find the, the area of the cross section for gauge 22. The area is, is given here is the 642 uh, uh, circular mills. The resistivity is 10.37. Uh, and the table for the resistance is given, it's very convenient. For every 1000 feet, the resistance will be equal to 16.14. Uh, uh, so how, what is the resistance for this 400? Uh, one way is uh, you just use a proportion. Because for 1,000 equals 16. Then how about 400? So just 40%. Then use the ratio, you get uh, 16.14 uh, times 40%, which is uh, 400 divided by 1,000. Uh, so that one equals uh, like a 6, some 6.46 ohms. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was trying to figure out what 16.4 is. Uh, 16 is the resistivity, it's given, right? And this uh, 0.4 is uh, 400 divided by 1,000. That's zero, right? So that is one way to calculate. Or, as I prefer, just directly use that formula, right? Uh, formula R equals rho times L over A. Right? Rho uh, is uh, uh, 
10.37 and the length equals 400 and the area of the cross section equals 642 then you plug into numbers and you get the same result also equals 6.464 okay any questions on this? Uh, what we need to keep in mind is uh, the length which one is the length? Okay. along the current flow okay. uh, the opposite way is the cross section okay. the perpendicular direction is the uh, cross section okay, we, this class is fundamentals of electronics and later time we will all discuss circuit analysis so what is a circuit? Okay. Uh, now you, you see we are going to be serious, right? circuit so the circuit consists of basically three components. The first one, you need to have a source. Okay? So you have a phone, you need to have batteries. Okay? So the first one is the voltage source, usually voltage source. Okay? Can be current source. The second one is a path. Okay? The current needs to flow along somewhere. Okay? Uh, so that's the, usually is close the path. Okay? From the positive terminal to the negative terminal must be closed. The third one is the load. We need to provide this power to a load to do some work. Right? So the third one is the load. Uh, one example is this very simple. It's a flashlight. Right? And this is the physical structure of uh, the flashlight. Uh, can you tell me where is the source? Batteries. The batteries. batteries. Yeah? This is negative, positive, negative, positive. They are connected in a series. You are going to discuss later time. Now you just consider, okay, this is one battery, so positive, negative. That's it. Okay. And uh, see this one connected to here. Uh, where is the load? The light bulb. The light bulb is the load, right? Yeah. Okay. So actually, it is just the resistor. Uh, resistor. Okay. Uh, so this, where is the path? The closed loop. Right? From positive, we go from positive yeah. all the way to negative. You can go opposite way, but you need to follow one rule. Otherwise, you're going to sometimes confuse. Right? We use prefer to use positive, then go this way. So need to be connected. Sometimes not working. Press the button. Already passed. Uh, pressed. Yeah. So sometimes this one is not. For example, the uh, the connection is not good. Then this won't work. Right? So when you for example, check this one, something wrong, you need to make sure this is a closed loop. So this one must be connected perfectly. Right? Then this one here. This one here must pass through the, the wire inside, right? right? Then go back, so here, then pass through this one, to the other side. Then this other side then connected to the, to the other side, the metal, right? metal casing here. And uh, this two are the same, okay? So here, then this is the switch. Mm -hmm. right? You can open this, you can close this. Right? If you put it this way, then it's closed, then this one goes here all the way to here, to the back, and we have metal uh, springs here, all right? Spring here. And this connects back to the positive, uh, negative. So this is a closed loop. Right? Uh, sometimes you put this one, okay, it won't work. So if you want to troubleshoot, then you need to check every point on the on the loop. If there's any disconnection, then it won't work. We need to have a closed loop. So if we know this principle, then it's very easy to, to troubleshoot, right? So later time you're going to have a lot a lot of troubleshoot work. Right? Even after you graduate graduate, you need to do something. Right? So you need to check all the closed loop. So anywhere can can have a problem. Okay, any questions on this? Now, when we draw the circuit, definitely we do not want to draw that uh, uh, beautiful thing, right? The flashlight, right? We are not, I'm not good at drawing that. So we have uh, uh, labels, a uh, diagram to represent the circuit. Right? So the flashlight circuit is represented, can be represented by this one. Right? So we can see it is the lamp, uh, and this one is the battery. The battery, we have two cells, we know we have two so we use this one here, long bar, negative, uh, short bar. Long bar means positive, short means negative. Right? And we have two cells, so we just use two in a series like this. 
Uh, how about we have three batteries? You want to use three? How about we have ten batteries? You want to use ten? Okay, not necessary. Right? You, we always use one or at most use two to represent this source. Even if you have 100 batteries, you still want to use just two, that's all. Right? And the Y is must be long, Y must be short, to represent positive and negative. This is for sure. Okay? Uh, this is the switch, so you can see it. In this state, it is closed. Right? Right? So the current can flow from positive all the way, uh, pass through the load here, then go back to, uh, goes back to the, to the, to the uh, negative to form a closed load. Okay. Any questions? And this resistor, right, this is a lamp, so represented by this. Actually, when we see the real circuit diagram, this we sometimes we do not use this one. For a general uh, resistor, uh, we just use a resistor. Sometimes we use it like this. Right? Some may use it like a, a rectangle. Uh, so it depends. Yeah, the same thing. We mentioned we have a switch in the flashlight. Right? So we need to discuss a little bit about the switch. Switches are commonly used to control the circuit. We can turn it on, we can turn it off the circuit by opening the switch or closing the switch. Uh, the switch can be a mechanic, right? like in the flashlight. You just push up and down, so you turn on or turn off. Uh, sometimes electronic, uh, electronic switch. So if you want to turn on or off the circuit very fast, how fast, for example, in each second you want to turn on or off 1,000 times? No one can do that physically, right? Turn on or off the circuit in 1,000 times each second. So in that case, we are going to use an electronic switch. Uh, that can uh, turn on or off very fast. Uh, we are going to discuss the uh, electronic switch a little time uh, in the following courses uh, using uh, use the electric circuit. Right? Uh, so today we are going to just discuss um, uh, mechanic mechanic switch. We have two concepts here. The first one is called pull. It refers to the movable arm of the switch. Right? So this is a, a pull. Right? This all this are called poles. And uh, the next one is called the throw. Uh, it refers to the number of contacts that are affected by the single switch action. Uh, so this one is the throw. Uh, this is the, in this case, how many throws? We have only one, right? So you close to this way, we only affect this one. So this is called a single pull, single throw. So F, P, F, T. So that is FP, single pull, single throw. We control only one uh, contact. How about this one? How many moving arms do we have? One. One, right? This one moves. Move to this way or to this way. How many throws do we have? Two. Two. So we call FP, DT, right? single pull, double throw. Right? FP, DT. What's the next one? Three. How many arms? Two. Two. How many throws? Two. 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 There's a one. Huh? Only one because we connect to each other, so you. Yeah. There's only one. So that's called a double pull. Single. Right? What's the next one? Double pull, right? Double pull, you can throw to this way or throw to that way. So we control this contact one, we control this contact two. So double pull, double throw. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, you haven't got a chance to be in the lab, right? so you're going to do this next semester. Uh, sorry, next, next week. <laughs> uh, the following semester, so you're going to be in the lab so for like uh, three or four years there. Right? We are going to discuss uh, several equipment. Right? 
Uh, the simplest, I believe, that this is you know, called the digital multimeter. Right. Digital multimeter is an uh, important multi purpose, and this is not very expensive. Okay, For this one, handheld, you can buy. Usually, if you are electrical technician or engineer, you are going to have yours. I have several of already. And uh, in the labs, we have something like a more uh, complicated one. Right? Um, but this one is very simple. So we can measure voltage, we can measure current, and we can measure resistance. If you buy some fancy ones, they can measure capacitance, inductance, or even transistors, or uh, some other things. Right? But the simplest can measure voltage, current, and resistance. That's three. Right? Uh, we have written here, so you can see this one are pointed to the, to the off, right? to see. Right? This is all to see with the battery. There, there's a battery inside. Right? And this one is uh, the voltage. Uh, voltage with a, a tilde on top, that means it's current, uh, AC voltage. Right? If you want to measure the voltage here, you are going to use this, uh, this one here. Uh, and uh, this one, hertz means uh, maybe frequency. Uh, and this is more fancy, this can measure frequency. Uh, and this has a voltage, there's a horizontal bar on top, that means DC. So if you want to measure, the, for example, your battery right? uh, or your car, right? you use this one. You, you move this one to here. And uh, also some uh, uh, millivolt or something. Okay? This is a uh, uh, current. Right? And the resistance, where is the resistance? No, no resistance. That's weird. Okay? So, but anyway, if you have one, you can check. Right? Uh, they, are, they are clear label. And this one is positive, this one is negative two terminals, and this is a voltage or ohms. Yeah, you can measure ohms here. Right? And this one is the common, common means the ground. Right? All the equipment must have a uh, common terminal connected each other for safety. Right? And if you measure the current, if you know the current is large, then you may want to put this one here to the, so the range can be up to 10 uh, A. Right? If the current is small, then you may want to use this one. This one is like a 40 milliamps. So that's the maximum you can. So before you take the measurement, you want to approximate your current. Right? How? Right? From Ohm's law, which we are going to discuss next time. Right? Uh, so this is the digital multimeter. The next one is analog. Right? This is very rare, right? you, you won't see this uh, for a lot of time. Right? Uh, this is the analog. So you need to choose the range here. So you can see voltage, current, and uh, resistance here. Uh, if you connect uh, to the two terminals and this needle will, uh, will move to somewhere and you carry the numbers uh, from, the, from, the, from this panel. Uh, you already watch the digital one is very convenient. You can read numbers directly. Uh, you don't even need to change the range. They tell you it's ohm or kilo ohm or mega ohm. But this one, you need to choose the, the range. Uh, this analog one has a benefit. For example, if you want to measure if the capacitor is good or not, uh, the digital one sure is not easy to do it. Uh, except you can measure the, the value of the capacitance, which is more expensive. But for this one, you can just, because there's battery inside, right? if you connect the two terminals to the two terminals of the capacitor, then it will charge the capacitor. Based on the movement, the pattern of this needle, you can determine if the capacitor is good, half good, or even totally bad. Right? Um, you are going to have more experience later. Okay. Okay, now we recall uh, some uh, uh, key terms. Right? The first one is uh, ampere. What is this? What is ampere? Uh, it is a unit for current, right? How large is one A, one ampere? A equals, uh, the current equals what? 
How to calculate the car? Uh, What's the definition for, for the current? Yeah. The charges uh, charge pass through a point in you, one unit time, right? Yeah. So it's Q divided by T. Oh, that means uh, if the current, if the charges uh, uh, pass through a point is uh, one column in each second, so that is one A. Right? So that's right. What is the AWG? You just mentioned 10 minutes ago. American wire, American wire gauge. Yeah. Eh? If the use numbers to represent the thickness of the wire, eh? the larger the number, the, the smaller the wire. Eh? Uh, next one is a charge. What is a, a charge? Uh, we have a positive charge, negative charge, right? Right. And uh, if you move the charge. In an electric field, you need to do the work. Work, okay. Right. Just, okay. So yeah. an electrical property of a uh, uh, matter, of matter that exists because of excess or deficiency of electrons, charge can be either positive or uh, negative. The protons has a, the proton charge is a positive or negative? Positive, right? How about the neutrons? Neutral, no charge. Neutron, no charge. Okay, zero. And the electrons is negative. Okay, good. Uh, circuit. Right. So we just mentioned circuit. So anyone can discuss about circuit. How can you have a circuit? You need to have a source, right? Like battery, voltage source. And you need to have a a closed loop, right? A path. Then you need to have a load, a load right? The load absorbs the power from the source, so it can do the work or anything, right? Okay. So we need at least these three uh, components. So a source, a load, and a, a interconnecting part or closed loop. It's easier to see this. Conductance. What is conductance? It is a reciprocal of a resistance, right? Yeah. Okay. What is the resistance? Uh, opposition to the opposition to the current. Yeah. Right? If the uh, resistance is large, that means the current uh, is small. Is, is small. small. It's not easy to flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if the conductance is large, that means the current uh, is not easy. Is easy to, it's easy to flow, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the conductance of uh, gold it's is. Uh, very Larger, very, very big, right? Yeah. Compared to the iron. Okay, Coulomb, what is this? Charge. Uh, charge. Oh, we need to distinguish between the, the quantity, okay, the, uh, the unit, the label, all this. So what is a Coulomb? First one, it is unit, right? Okay. The unit of uh, electric charge. Uh, in the textbook, uh, we didn't mention this in the, in the slide, but uh, in the textbook, how large is one column of charge? If you have a textbook, you already read that. Okay? Oh, how many electrons? Eh? One electron, two electrons, three, or how many electrons uh, communi uh, communicate together call them, give you one column of charge? Two? two? Six point zero two times so one more. ten, 10 three. to the power of uh, twenty three, right? Twenty three? No, uh, nineteen or eighteen? Eighteen. Eighteen, not twenty three. Okay, that twenty three is not not number. Okay, so six something times ten to the eighteen. Ten to the eighteen is called a what? Trillion. What's that? What's next one? Uh, P. It's called P, right? Yeah, that one. Right. So it's a very large number. So how how many charge does one electron have? One. One? One what? Negative. How many columns? One column equals six something times ten to the eighth. The inverse of number of uh, Electrons. 
So each electron has a very, 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 very small number of uh, coulombs. Yeah. So which will be uh, 1 over 6 times uh, 10 to the 18. So which equals like 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So it's very small. Uh, one electron is uh, almost nothing. Right? So you can imagine if the current is 1 a, that means in each second you are going to have like a 6 times 10 to the 18th number of electrons pass through the wire. Yeah. That's a lot, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, current, we already mentioned this, right? The current means uh, the flow of the electric charge. Right. And electrons. Negative charge. Uh, negative as one unit charge. Okay, electron. So which is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative uh, 19 yeah. coulombs. Yeah. Ground. What is ground? Earth. 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 Here we have ground, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you stand on the ground, so your hand is also ground. Yes. 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 All right. Everything. And uh, now you touch your cell phone. So the outside, if it's metal, that cell phone, the casing is also a uh, ground, yeah, right? You're grounded now. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, the inside, there's a PCB circuit. Uh, there must be a ground terminal. That terminal must be connected to the outside. So that's formed the ground. So every ground is connected. Okay? Uh, if you read the electric diagram, right, circuit, and you, you know which line is the source. Uh, all the sources connect to each other, and you need to know which lines are the ground. All the ground are connected to each other. Right? O is the unit of a resistance. 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 Okay. Uh, potential meter. Uh, last time we briefly discussed this, but we use another name. It's called a variable. Resistor, right? Oh, okay. So we have uh, three terminals. Still remember? Yes. Do you have an uh, Im yeah. image? Yes. Okay, so that's called the potential emitter, uh, right? And uh, give us uh, a variable resistance. Right? There are basically two types of connections, right? Remember, there's one and three connect. This gives us the maximum, and the other one is in the middle. You can connect this way, or you can connect this way, right? So, uh, resistance, we already mentioned, right? Real step. Huh? You turn your, you, that thing to control the temperature or something. Inside, there's a real step. Right? What's that? Right, that is one type of the potential. Right? So, that's the second connection. Siemens is the unit of conductance, right? and the volt is the unit of voltage, and the ball is called the electromotive force, right? but we prefer to use the voltage. Right? And voltage is the amount of energy per charge available to move electrons from one point to another in an electric circuit. Uh, okay, now. We are going to discuss this uh, quiz questions. The atomic number is the number of what? Which one? Proton. A. 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 The protons in the nucleus. Second one, the neutrons in the nucleus. Uh, the protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. And the electrons in the outer shell. Which one? A. 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 Okay, the protons in the nuclear, for example, for carbon, how many, what, what's the number? Six. Yeah. Eh? Oxygen, eight. 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 Eh? Uh, copper is what? Uh, 29. 29. 29. Copper is 29? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, nine. And, uh, okay, the second, so A is correct. Eh? Yeah. What is uh, B? Neutrons in the nucleus. Sorry. 
So we want to discuss all this uh, concept. Huh? How many neutrons in the uh, how many neutrons in the nu nuclei? The same as protons. The same as uh, protons. Sometimes. 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 Yeah. Most of the time, maybe. Yeah, most. Eh? Oh. But it's not right. Neutrons uh, has zero charge. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, protons plus neutrons in the nuclei. What is this now? That's your atomic mass. Atomic mass. Okay. Right? The larger the number, the more neutrons you get. Uh, can we say the heavier the matter? Yeah, yeah. At least the forecast, right? So the, for example, one more of uh, oxygen or one more of uh, hydrogen. One more of hydrogen is uh, two grams. One more of oxygen is thirty-two because thirty-two is the number of uh, oxygen sixteen plus sixteen. Right? For oxygen, uh, for uh, hydrogen, that's one plus one, so that's two. So that determines how heavy the at least the gas. I'm not quite sure for solid like metal or something, but it's heavy, it's heavy right? Okay. The electrons. Right? First one we said, okay, we do not consider this one. Electrons in the outer shell. We only consider the electrons. Huh? Ignore this part first. The electrons. Is the number of electrons equals the number of uh, protons? Usually, yeah. Usually for what condition? Stable. Yes, it's stable in the neutral state, right? Yeah. Okay, so the number of neutron uh, protons are always equals to the number of electrons for a neutral atom. For ion, that's different, right? Mm -hmm. If you lose one electron, mm -hmm. then that will be a positive ion. Right? If you gain one electron, that will be a negative ion. Right? Uh, what is the D? Electrons in the outer shell. So now you have an image of that uh, ball atom uh, model. So inside, how many are inside? In the in, two. In two. What's next? Eight. eight. Uh, what's the next eight? Eighteen. Eighteen or something, probably, right? So the outside, outer shell is called, uh, what we call that? The valence. Uh, valence shell. Uh, so that is the electron. That's number. Determine yourself. Okay, well, I think we have another question. Okay, valence electrons are the outer shell. A is good. Yeah. Huh? In the outer chemical shell. Right. Yes. Yes. Relatively loose. B yeah. involved in chemical reactions. Yeah. 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 Oh yes. yes. Okay. C is relatively loosely bonded. D. Yeah. D. Okay, that's also correct, right? So D, so D all of the above. So D is correct. So everybody understand all this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. The next one, the atomic uh, particle responsible for electrical current in a solid metallic uh, metallic uh, conductors is the proton, electron, neutron, all of the above. Uh, which one? D. The electrons? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Okay. Don't be scared. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are sure, right? B. Electrons, right? D. Uh, what proton? What does proton determine? Positive. Yeah, it has a positive charge. So, for example, what this number, the, the number of protons determine what? Element, right? So if you have a different number of uh, protons, that means uh, you have different matters. Does that make sense? So they are different things. Right. Neutrons, we already mentioned. Okay. So the uh, the correct answer is uh, is electrons. Okay. And the next one, the symbols for electric charge is. Uh, C, A, A. Uh, so A, okay, A, C, right? Yeah. What is B? Oh, oh, oh. Resistance. For resistance. Uh, we need to know the, the name, the, the, the symbol, and the, and the unit. What is Q? Charge. 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 
Yeah. What is Q? Charge. Represent charge or I think charge is uh, so the unit is a C. Cool. So what's the difference between this stuff? C is cool. So what is C and Q? What's the difference between C is the unit. C is the short or is the symbol for unit. Yeah. C represent a cool. columns, right? Yeah. Q symbol. is the symbol for the charge. for the for the charge. Yeah. Okay. So this is Q. And this one is a uh, resistance. Resistance. Oh, oh, resistance. Unit. Is unit is the symbol for unit, yeah. right? What's the symbol for the for the for what for the for the for the variable? R. R. R, R means a resistance. Okay, so R ohm. So they are pair but different means. So the same thing but they are different. Right? And C and Q. What is done? Work. 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 Right. But we do not say work in, in here. We say energy, right? Because later time we are going to calculate the electrical energy. So W is the is the symbol for energy. What is the unit for energy? Joules. So that it will be J. Okay, J and W will be. Uh, so we're one pair. So don't be confused with the, all these numbers. Right? Uh, you're going to see there are some like a, uh, home in the textbook or in the in the midterm. Right? You're going to see. Let you see what is Q. Right? Uh, Q is uh, the symbol for the for the charge right? and all this. Right? Don't be confused. So read the model textbook. The definition for Voltage is uh, C. 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 Okay. Everybody says C. Yes. So how to explain C? Yeah. What is equals uh, the energy divided by the electric charge? Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean physically? You move an uh, electric charge, which is Q, right? Yeah. And uh, along or opposite to the electric line, and you need to do work of a W. So this work divided by the number of uh, charge, or we said the work done by the unit, you need to be done to the unit, unit charge is called the, the voltage. Right. What's the unit for the voltage? Q. Volt. Volt, Volt. right? What's the unit for this one? Joules. This one is a Coulomb. 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 So uh, V equals uh, a unit equals uh, uh, joules uh, per Coulomb. Coulomb per C, right? Okay. Uh, what is this? V equals I times T. I, I want you to revise this one, to make a correction. <coughs> this one looks like not correct, right? We don't choose this. So how to make this correct? At least this formula is correct. Look, at, this is what it, this is the current and this is time. Mm -hmm. The current and time. So current times time equals what? Current times time equals what? <coughs> Q equals Q, right? Yeah. Right. Because the definition of the current equals uh, uh, the charge uh, passing through uh, uh, over time, per unit of time. So that is uh, Q equals I times T. Right? Good. Uh, and this one is supposed to be I. Right? Q equals I times T. Right? This one is good. This one V equals W or Q. W or Q. What is W or Q? That's the voltage, right? Yeah. That's, that is correct. Okay. A battery, eh? you mentioned this last time, a battery stores uh, electrons, protons, 
Oh, yeah. Chemical, chemical, energy. chemical energy. Chemical energy. Okay, perfect. That's <laughs> oh, don't be confused. Okay, the battery uh, stores not electrons. Nope. Right? Not protons. Not ions. Right? It stores a chemical uh, energy. So the process of utilizing a battery. What that process? How are you going to describe that process? You use your battery in your circuit. Can you see how energy are converted? How, how is that? Chemical energy converted into electricity, right? Electrical energy. How about the process of uh, charge your battery? Electric or energy or electricity converted into chemical. chemical. Okay, those uh, we have some more to see about this. Okay? This one is a very old concept. Uh, this is a chemical uh, batteries. How about uh, like the the windmill, okay. uh, the solar panels, and also like uh, I don't know how to say this. Uh, they have like a flying wheel. Oh, like eh? power energy, like the water Okay, you know that, all right? So that is also called a battery, right? Or a wind turbine? But in water. You you have a very big wheel, so, eh? So for example, yeah. when the I like the water, yeah, the like water, water, water mill is one, okay? Mm -hmm. And for example, if you have big uh, reservoir here, mm -hmm. and uh, if you have a lot of solar, for example, in the daytime. You want to use that uh, energy to drive the water from the low point all the way to the high point. So store the water there. Then at night, you flow the water from the high to the low, drive the Still high, turbine, right? Mm -hmm. okay, to convert it into electricity. So that reservoir is a battery, kind of. Yeah. We can call that a battery, right? So it's yeah. store, so what? So the, the, the water, right? Yeah. Okay, so the water has a potential energy, so high or low, they have different potential. So that one is also better. So the concept of battery is very wide, not only these chemicals. Right? The flying wheel, right? if you look on the website, uh, you, you can search. They also use to store energy. For example, usually the energy, the electricity is uh, cheap in the daytime, right? So what you do is you use your electricity at the daytime to drive your wheel so the wheel can, fl can rotate very fast, like more than 10,000 turns per minute. Right? And that wheel is very, very large, very heavy. Right? So the flying wheel stored a lot of energy. What kind of energy? Mechanical energy. Right? And at a, Night, you can use the mechanical energy to drive your, for example, electrical generator to generate electricity you can use. So in this way, that flying wheel, uh, if you look on the web, uh, search website, flying wheel, that is, right? also store mechanical energy. So not necessarily chemical energy, right? but that battery is called, you become also call that battery, right? Right. Yeah. Some companies, they have that big thing, right? somewhere, so that's <laughs> better. But the inside is just a flying wheel. Uh, and also, some are like a capacitor. Right? We are going to discuss capacitors later time, but the capacitor can also store energy. Right? So there's a different similarity between capacitor and a battery. So anyone has the car, the vehicle camcorder inside your car. Who has, who has that one to record the thing? Right? Inside, some uh, use a battery, some use a capacitor. Uh, the battery, the bad thing for battery is uh, the temperature inside your car is very high, right? In the summertime. Yeah. So the battery maybe explode or something. Right? Uh, but the capacitor is good. Can still store the energy. Yes. But the bad thing is, Usually the capacitor store energy for a short time. Right? The battery can be longer time. So if you store your car, park your car you know, for longer time, like one week, 
you already, the, if you use a capacitor, then you need to, everything is a reset, because there's multiple energy. So they have different considerations. Right? So anyway, here, the point is a battery, we have a, a different concept for this battery. So mm -hmm. you can think, right? Okay, next, the unit of a conductance. Siemens. 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 How do you call this? Uh, Siemens. <laughs> Siemens. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is, uh, what unit is O? Sorry? What unit is O? Resistance. 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 Right? What is unit for column? Electric, Electric charge. charge. Uh, this one is for conductor. Yeah. What is this one? Current. 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 Okay. Current. Now, do you remember the color band? Oh, yes, sir. Zero for what? Zero use what to represent zero? Uh, black. 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 <coughs> black. What is orange? Three? Three. Three, right? Sure. What is yellow? Four. 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 Four, right? What is the fire? Green. 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 Okay, good. Perfect. All right. uh, the second level we are you are going to read on this color. Alright, so now this one. The four color resistor with the color band green, red, black, gold is uh, to A first of all, A two with zero multiplier. So it's B. It is B, right? Five percent. Five percent is the tolerance. That's right. And this black means uh, zero means the, the exponent. So the first the two numbers are multiplied by ten to the zero, which is the one. So this resistance must be only two digits like a 35 or something, right? So possibly this one and this one. <coughs> not this, not this. You're right. Does that make sense? All right, so now we need to determine this one. So this one, is, the first one is gray. Gray is what? Is it seven or eight? Which eight. one? Eight. 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 Okay, so then. Eight. 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 Uh, if you memorize this one, it's, it's, it's very convenient. For example, if you go field, uh, work on this, you, Get this one, then you, you can read this. You don't need to get your meter out to marry this. So. Okay, this one. Try this one again. Uh, 330K plus minus 5% has the color band of which one? Okay, first one we do this 5% means gold, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. all are gold, so that's possible. Uh, so, we need to use two uh, numbers. There, we need to determine the the exponent. So, what is the the power of ten? Four. Four, right? So, four is yellow. Yeah. Yellow. All right. So, this one, no. This one, no. This one. So only this one, right? Yep. Orange. Okay. Orange. Orange is three. Okay. So it's B. Right? This one, yes? Yes, yes first one. Uh, because uh, the first one represents uh, the first digit. The second one represents the second digit. Right? For example, 32, suppose. Then this one is the power of 10. So multiply by all the number of zeros after the first two numbers. So in this case, this orange means three, this one means a three, so the three three yellow means a four, so we have four zeros after thirty three. So that's a three three zero 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 zero, which means a three hundred thirty k. Does that make sense? So the first one, what is red? Two, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a two two. What is brown? One. 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 So that is a two two zero. So it's two hundred twenty oh. Make sense? Yeah. Right. I only tolerate 
The circular mirror is the unit for. Huh, oh, I don't like this. Okay, cross area. So, which one? Area, right? Area. Yeah. All right. So, circle. Yeah. how big is one circle? Anyone you know? has. You have a textbook. Can you check on the textbook? Uh, how large is this uh, circular mill? How large is this? <coughs> I believe this one I use it for technology. So, uh, uh, technology. Eight, 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 Google it, man. I think I'll figure it out later. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a Google question. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, I believe this is very small. Right? I found that one. That was all of an angle. It's an area of a wire. The answer is a circular area. Nice. So that's going to be a B. Crazy. Oh, yeah. It's a circle. That circular mirror is the unit of the area. But we want to know how long it is there. Okay, any other questions? One sulfur mill is equal to the wire diameter of 0.001 inch. 0.001 inch diameter. Yeah, that's the inspiration. That's Oh, one million. Okay, one million inch, inch of diameter. Yeah. Oh, circle, oh, so yeah. Circle mirror. Mirror means uh, one out of one of inch. So that is 0 0.001 inch is the diameter of the. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is small. Okay. It's a small boy. Uh, I think we finished this chapter. Eh? Uh, but uh, I believe I received a lot of emails about the homework or anything. So I, we still have some time. I will take this time to answer your questions. Uh, textbook, for example, if you have questions about the textbook, the lecture, okay? and the homework, so anything, we are going to discuss it. Okay? This is the section of the right? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, they have a self-test assumption. That's the only thing that you can do. <laughs> yeah, we will the problem. Yeah, we will the problem. Yeah, we will the problem. Yeah, Ampere plus 10,000 micro. So this way, to add two numbers with different units, we need to convert one unit to the other. So we can only add two numbers with the same unit, right? So in this case, uh, you can convert uh, a milli into micro, or you can convert the micro into milli, and depending on you all. For this one, you can even convert the both into just the Okay. So no matter what, you convert it into the same unit and you add it. Okay. So in this case, this one is, uh, uh, I will like use the MA, so that's 2873. This one, micro chain into MIDI, you need to move to the left. You run out of time, so that will be spin, MIDI, So this is just a 10 A. This one is a 
Two forty-five. So one fifteen and two forty-five. You still have one and a half hours. I started at one fifteen. How about what is before one fifteen? I have nothing. Okay, then you just go there at eleven thirty. Eleven thirty to one. That's an hour and a half. You don't need to do the whole hour. You can leave early. So you go there at eleven thirty. Then you can leave at one ten. So we'll give you like one hour forty minutes. So I believe. That's enough. Eh? <laughs> Another trick is you review the lecture, uh, the, the lab material. Maybe the first one you don't know, but later time they are going to give you more. I will post the lab material on the website. So check the website. So before you go to the lab, you'd better review the, lab, uh, the material so you can have an idea of what you're going to do in the lab. So you can do this faster. Eh? So I think uh, like one and a half hours is, uh, is good enough. Any other questions? Yes. I got, I got classes all day for me. Class at uh, what? I got classes all day. All day? Eight to four. Eight to four. <laughs> no break in the time. What what day? Monday and Wednesday? Monday and Wednesday. You too. Hey, you cannot hear in this class. Why? why you? My, my suggestion is uh, there must be some because E T R Y is offered only at this time. Okay? So I suggest is you move some other classes to others. Other class, for example, general education, psychology, or social science, they have a lot of sections. You need to move those out of this time. So if you from eight to four, there's no way you can do it. Like they have like a one and a half hour. That's good. Tuesday is a Thursday, and we have two classes. Yeah, you move your some classes to Tuesday and Thursday because this class cannot change. This one. Others, we have only one section. And other classes, they have a lot of sections. I get so many and you need to try this as early as possible because you know all the classes close very fast. Uh, are you both of you are you EET? Are you EET or CET? CET. CET also? <laughs> you like EET? Who, who's the other one? Me? Okay. So you know there are a lot of other, for example, for the. Um, Music, you can choose music, you can choose dance, you can choose the field. Yeah, so they have different courses you can choose. So they are definitely more, much, much more flexible than you. So my suggestion is move out uh, to save that time for you. Okay, any other questions? So the homework is due Tuesday. Eh? No late homework. You need to submit the first thing when you come here. Ah, yeah. oh, question. I do the homework. Do I just write down the answers? Ah? Uh, I just write down the answers when I do the homework. Yeah, you write it on uh, clearly. Okay, write your name, your ID, 
uh, my suggestion is also both uh, side on the on the front on the back yeah. uh, on the back only write your name and your ID the reason is if I give you a score on, on the front I will flip over here so you can pick yours without saying any score Does that make sense otherwise I need this to be that's a long, long time so write your name on both sides and do not write any uh, yeah that's fine so you write on the piece of paper right and you can bring it to the cloud yeah. okay good not that difficult right uh, also another suggestion do the homework as early as possible right? don't wait until okay it's still today nine o'clock so i will finish at from eight o'clock that's <laughs> not the way right way to do it <laughs> Right after the class, read the lecture, uh, read the textbook, review the lecture notes, then try to start the homework. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, we need to have a very good habit of dealing with the study, okay? So do the homework as early as possible. Don't wait until the last minute. Otherwise, you are going to have trouble, right? And also study the the, the material as early as possible. Don't don't wait until the, the midterm. We have midterm, right? Everything is on the on the website. You can see the uh, the mid the first midterm is uh, after the first the two chapters. Right? So you see the area. <laughs> More questions? It's good? Okay, good, man. Thank you. Wow. I always like to the general way. I really wanted to. I was like, so you want to go faster?